and welcome to lesson number 5.2 in the Atlas tutorial series. Uh, today we're going to put some objects on the screen and examine a few more of the common methods. In the video lesson 5.1 we did move, turn, roll, and resize. And today we'll be examining turn to face, point at, move to, and move towards. So let's go ahead and get started and take a look at how objects interact with the other method calls. So let's start by resizing our window here and I'm just going to use the standard grass world. Um, we're going to add a couple objects here and let's see, and we use ancients and animals a lot. Let's see if we have anything else that uh, we can use. Let's go over here and use Japan. I'm going to add a samurai and a fan dancer and I'll orient them so that the sort of looking at one another and that'll be good for right now so let's go ahead and click done we've got our objects here that we can manipulate I'm gonna start by clicking on the samurai and said so last video we looked at move turn roll and resize and eventually we'll go through all of these but what I want to see today is how move to move towards move away from orient to turn to face and point at work in your program. So that's our ultimate goal is to take a look at these guys right here. Move to, move towards, and move away from are all really similar to one another. But before we use them, um, I told you we wouldn't use this property very often, but it will definitely help us out. So I'm going to change the property of the samurai and fill style from solid to points. And you'll see the samurai almost disappears. But what I want to draw your attention to are those green, red, and blue lines that are in the center of the samurai. We can even move our camera to kind of zoom in on those a little bit. What those represent is the center of the samurai object. This uh, green arrow right here represents the y-axis, that is the elevation up and down. The blue axis represents the z-axis, forward and back and the red line represents the x-axis, which is left and right. And where the three of those meet is considered the center point of the object. If I back off the samurai a little bit, we can head over to this uh, fan dancer, select her properties, and put her into points as well. And the one thing you'll, you'll notice about her that's a little bit different is the center point of her object is much, much closer to her feet than the samurai. So while the fan dancer has the meeting down here by the feet, the samurai has it more in the center of his body. This is going to become really important, and it may not seem super important right now. It's, you may be asking yourself, why is the center point of an object matter? Is it that big of a deal? And yeah, it really does, particularly in the next methods we're going to use. So let's go ahead and put these two guys back in solid. And I want the samurai to move. And right now I want the samurai to move to the fan dancer. So I'm going to drag samurai over to my first method. And when it asks me what I want it to move to, I'm going to select the fan dancer and the entire fan dancer. Let's hit play and see what happens. The object definitely moved to the fan dancer. Let's slow it down a little bit by selecting more, choosing duration, and making this animation happen in three seconds. When I hit play, the object moves. What's happening with the move to command is it will take two objects and align the center points. The center of the samurai is now exactly in the same location as the center of the fan dancer. Since the center of the samurai was in his torso and the center of the fan dancer was near her feet, those two objects are now completely aligned with one another. It definitely moved the samurai, but it's not exactly what we want. It creates some collision problems and it doesn't quite look right. I'm going to right click on this and disable it for now. And I'm going to use the move towards command. When I use move towards, move towards, and now I'm going to select the distance. This is how far do I want the samurai to go? 
let's go ahead and say two meters towards the fan dancer. Move towards and move to are really similar. The only difference is move towards allows me to limit the distance the object will move before stopping. I'm going to go ahead and set the duration to three seconds here as well and run the animation. I see the samurai starts moving towards the fan dancer, but when he hits three meters, he stops. But the animation still doesn't look quite right. The center point of the samurai is in his torso, so if you imagine drawing a straight line from this torso right here to the center point of the fan dancer, the samurai is going to try and move in a straight line, which means his feet are going to start to clip through the bottom of the grass. There are definitely going to be points where move to and move towards are our best option, but certainly with the samurai and the fan dancer, it's creating a little bit of a strange animation. If I disable this right here and choose move away from 2 meters fan dancer, duration 3 seconds, the exact opposite of move towards is going to happen. We're going to draw a straight line between the fan dancer center point and the samurai center point, and then we're going to move the samurai backwards 2 meters along that line. Let's hit play and see what happens. And the samurai moves off the screen. Let's move him forward just a bit so we can watch this happen. Hit play again. And the samurai starts to float a little bit as he moves. That's because a straight line from the foot of the fan dancer to the center of the samurai's torso continues to gain elevation as you move away. This works really well when you're trying to manipulate objects in space. If you have a spaceship moving towards another spaceship, this tends to work pretty well, or anytime you have elevated objects. So that's what the move to, move towards, and move away from commands are used for. Now we're getting quite a bit of code here on the screen, so I'm going to delete each of the lines that I've added so far so that we can look at some of the other methods that we're going to be using. Orient to will change the orientation of an object to match the orientation of another object. If I tell the samurai to orient to the fan dancer, again, I'm going to set the duration to three seconds so the animation runs a little bit slower and it's easier to see. When I hit play, the samurai will turn to be facing the same direction as the fan dancer. This is really useful when you're trying to align directions for two objects, because at this point now, if I told the fan dancer and the samurai to both move forward, they would be guaranteed to move in the same direction, because the samurai just oriented to the fan dancer. So, orient to changes one object to face and have the same x, y, and z axis as another object. I'm going to disable that line of code right there. And now we're going to do turn to face, the fan dancer. Turn to face pretty much does the opposite of orient to. This will take the samurai and make and, and basically make him face the fan dancer and I'll show you how that works in a second but let's hit uh, duration three seconds and hit play. We'll see the object turns just a little bit but now he's directly facing the fan dancer. The way this works right here if we go back to our properties and, and change them to points so that we can see their their axes. They both have this blue line and if we orient the camera it will be a little bit easier to see. So you've got this blue line coming out of the samurai and we have a blue line coming out of the fan dancer. The turn to face command will make it so that this blue line of the samurai is turning such that it is going to cross the center point if, it's, if it moves forward. I mean, essentially, it's going to face the center of the fan dancer, but it's not going to change the elevation. It's not going to change the direction the samurai is facing. If we turn these two objects back into solid objects, and let's zoom the camera out a little bit, turn to face is real similar to this point at command. When I was first learning Alice, one of the, uh, one of the things that really bothered me um, was 
One of the things that really bothered me was I tried to use the point at command, and I figured, okay, what that's going to do is the samurai will raise his hand and point at the fan the fan dancer, and it didn't happen like that. In fact, the I had the objects facing each other relatively well, so when I hit play, it almost looked like nothing was doing, and I got really frustrated at Alice at first because I thought, man, point at doesn't work. All I want to do is have the object point at the other. But what it's doing is it's aligning orientations of the objects, not so much raising a hand, raising a finger, and pointing. You can do that, but they're different commands. So let's disable this right here. And uh, actually, I don't want the fan dancer. That was a mistake. Let me delete this line right here. I want the samurai, and I want the samurai to point at the fan dancer. This is going to do virtually the same thing as turn to face, but when I hit play, the samurai will kind of tilt forward. The reason is point at will take the center point of the samurai and it will take that forward axis, that Z axis, and it will point it so that if he were to move forward, the center points would eventually align. You can almost think of it like this. Move to is the same as having point at and then moving forward the same distance to the center. So if I point at an object and then tell it just to move forward, by using this move command, I'll get the same effect. Let's see how this works. So let's delete this code. And test number one is simply going to be have the samurai move to three meters towards the fan dancer. When I hit play, the samurai moves three meters towards the fan dancer. Alternatively, if I were to disable this code right here, I can have the samurai point at the fan dancer, then move forward three meters and have roughly the same effect. The only difference is prior to moving, the samurai will point at the fan dancer. So point and then move. The center point of the samurai will end up in the exact same spot. So the point at command will take the Z axis and point it directly at the center of another object where the turn to face uh, uh, method will turn that z-axis so that it still faces the center point of the ob other object, but it won't quite orient it to change elevation. It won't move it and rotate it along the y-axis. So that's really all of the, uh, the six methods I wanted to show you for this video. Uh, as in all the other videos, just remember that it doesn't have to be entire objects. It can still be subparts. Um, if I wanted to create some really strange effects, let me go ahead and delete these lines of code. And I can say I want the samurai to move to the fan dancer. But then I could change this and say I want the samurai's upper body, head, the entire head, to move to the fan dancer, upper body, neck, head. So now my code says, move the samurai's head to the fan dancer's head. Let's do this over a duration of three seconds. And when I hit play, I can see that only certain parts are being affected. And while there may not be a really useful uh, call for having a severed floating head move across your screen, if you were writing a scene where maybe someone's head came off, that you know, might be useful. But remember, as with all of these things, you're not limited to entire objects. You can move singular pieces or groups of an object and impact them with the same methods. So with move, turn, roll, resize, move to, move towards, move away from, orient to, turn to face, and point at, uh, I think we'll be able to make some pretty interesting programs. So let's take a look at the lesson 5.2 challenge program. <laughs> So your challenge program for Lesson 5.2 is pretty simple. Uh, it was used using only the commands that we've learned thus far, move, turn, roll, resize, along with the move to, orient to, face to, point to, um, those. This is going to be a pretty crude looking in animation because we haven't learned some of the stuff that will make the animation more realistic, such as do together and 
uh, do in order. So it's, again, a really crude animation, but to make sure that you're caught up to this point, uh, try and recreate a scene similar to what we have here. Um, this is uh, two samurais fighting, and I've changed one of the samurais to have more of a bluish tint. Uh, it didn't work out perfect, and I didn't spend a ton of time uh, redoing this. But we're going to have the red samurai and the blue samurai fight. So if I go ahead and hit play, and watch the animation. Again, it's a very crude animation. We haven't bothered to do any walking, but what we've got is the samurai turning to face the blue samurai, raising his right arm. The blue samurai raises his leg to, I don't know, maybe do a crane kick. The red samurai jumps forward, punches him in the face, the blue samurai falls over, and the red samurai returns to his original position. So let's watch that one more time. So again, it's not a perfect animation. There's definitely no realism to it, but it's made using only commands that we've learned thus far. And so to make sure that you're still on the right track and that you know what's going on, try and recreate a scene like this. It doesn't have to be samurais, but see if you can get two objects uh, working together. Now on this one right here, we have turn to face, we have move, we are moving subparts, we're turning subparts. Um, you've got like individual legs moving. So it's it's definitely good practice. And I understand it's not an earth shattering animation, but it's definitely something that you can use to make sure that you're on track. So go ahead and recreate this animation. As always, if you have any questions about anything you've seen in this or previous videos, or you need help with any of your programs, please let me know in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I can and kind of get your response and make sure that everything you're trying to do is working as well. Thank you so much for watching the Alice tutorial series, and we'll see you next time.